afternoon guys. How are you guys doing today? Yeah. Doing good? My name is Talia. I'm one of the trainers here at the aquarium and behind me are three of our Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. So I just want to let you guys know that this is actually the first day that these dolphins have been in this pool. So we just moved them over today. So today is going to be a lot of the trainers getting the dolphins used to their new environment. So it's a lot of kind of waiting around for us to make sure that the animals are ready to participate. Voluntary. We do not force them or make them do anything that they don't want to do or that they're uncomfortable with. So a lot of what we're doing today is making sure that they're used to their environment. We are monitoring their health very closely, watching their swimming patterns. And you will notice that maybe even during the presentation or throughout the day, the trainers may or may not step up to the sides of the pool to try to feed the dolphins. Sometimes we try to feed them together or separately. But as I mentioned before, we have three dolphins that are up here right now. Normally they're inside actually at our main pool, but we're going to be doing some renovations to our main pool, so we move them up here. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about why each of those dolphins are here. They are all rescued dolphins. So we do have um, three females. One is our oldest and our largest dolphin, and her name is Panama. Um, the average lifespan of a dolphin out in the wild is about 20 to 25 years. Panama is about 40 years old. So um, she's also our largest dolphin. She weighs about 458 pounds. So Panama um, is a very special story. She was actually rescued at Panama City Beach. That's why her name is Panama. And um, if you get a chance to look closely at her mouth or at her teeth, you will notice that her teeth are very worn down and flat. And as dolphins get older, sometimes their teeth start to get a little bit worn. And dolphins do need to have really sharp teeth because out in the ocean they have to catch live fish. So they're going to be swimming around and they use those teeth for grasping and pulling the fish into their mouths. However, if you watch our trainers feed our dolphins, they will swallow their food whole. So dolphins swallow the food whole, they don't chew, but they do need to have the teeth for catching. So Panama was having a lot of difficulty catching fish because her teeth were so worn down. And so she was believed to be associated with a pod of beggar dolphins. And um, those are dolphins that go up to boats or shorelines and they catch fish, um, maybe bait fish or maybe people food that humans are feeding them. So how many of you guys are here on vacation? Is anybody on vacation? Wow. <laughs> awesome. I guess you guys are having a good time. Huh? So if you guys are on vacation, if you're from up north, um, here in Florida and actually in the United States, it is against the law to feed or touch or harm or harass marine mammals like dolphins. They are protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972. And that's because if you do interact with dolphins or you feed them, it can be very harmful to their health. So Panama um, act was actually found to have a bacterial infection at the time of her stranding, which is probably from eating that food. Um, so dolphins, whenever they get sick or they're injured, many times they will strand themselves up on the beach. And that's because dolphins need to swim around to survive. They do live in the water. And if they're sick or they're not feeling well, many times the beach seems like a nice option for them to go up there and rest. But if they're up there for a long period of time, of course, it can be some pretty serious trouble because dolphins need the water to survive. So for those of you who are on vacation, or for those of you who are locals and you may not know this, it's not a good idea to push um, a dolphin or a whale back out into the water if you see them on the beach. And that's because if you do push them back out, then they're probably just going to strand themselves again because most likely there's something wrong. Either they're injured or something medically is not right. So if you do happen to see a stranded animal, it's a good idea to call us or call another facility in the area so that they can help that animal. So um, due to Panama's teeth being worn um, and because she's not able to catch her own fish, um, you will also um, notice that she has a lot of scarring on her back. Um, that's from second and third degree sunburn. So dolphins can get a sunburn just like a person. That's because their skin is very sensitive. So if they're stranded up on the beach and their skin is exposed, then um, many times they will get a pretty severe sunburn. Have any of you guys seen our dolphin Nicholas today? A few of you. So if you guys do see Nicholas, um, he's our only male dolphin. He's actually over at Dolphin Terrace. So if you guys go back in the way you came and up um, the stairs to the third level, he has very severe scarring from sunburn. They're even more severe than Panama scarring. So Panama cannot be released for those reasons. She is a resident animal. And also, Panama is deaf. So she cannot hear. We do accommodate to her needs and um, communicate with her very differently from our other dolphins. You will notice that the trainers here all use whistles. Um, many facilities do use whistles with their dolphins. That's because dolphins do have ears. They hear very well under the water and above the water. Um, however, they hear at a much higher frequency than we do. So they're not really able to understand our voice, but they do respond to the whistle. 
And our trainers are going to step up to our dolphins right now and see if they can interact with them a little bit. See if we can get them to respond to some different behaviors. Um, you will notice that Tiffany is going to be working with Panama, and whenever she works with Panama, she'll probably point with her finger. Or if she is able to touch Panama, she may tap her, and that is what we call a bridge. Um, we call it a bridge because it bridges the gap of time between the time the animal completes the behavior correctly um, to the time the trainer is able to reward them. So today is a lot of trial and error for us trainers. This is a new environment for our animals, so we're trying to get them used to it. We want them to be comfortable, so we're trying to move them around a little bit, um, feed them from various places, and that's called positive reinforcement. So for any of you that maybe have a pet at home, you may teach your dog or your puppy various behaviors and then reward them with treats or tell them good job or good boy or good girl. That's pretty much what we do with our dolphins. We're just trying to get them moving around a little bit. And whenever a dolphin comes and sits in front of their trainer, that behavior is called a station. So it just means that the animal swims over, they sit in front of you, and they wait to get their food or their reward or reinforcement. And so this is a very, very basic behavior. It's pretty much the first behavior that you train with a new animal is a station to get them to come over, respond to you, and accept food from you. So it's a very basic behavior, but it's something that we have to work on with our animals because they're in a completely new environment. So it's important to get them used to it and just let them understand, hey, it is a new pool, and this is a new environment, but we're still the same trainers, we still have the same fish, and we're still going to reward you the same way. So it's just the easiest way for us to communicate to them that everything is okay, everything is all good. So we can say we're going to step away and take a little break now, but that's what we're going to be doing all throughout the day. That's what we've been doing most, most of the day today. Um, so Panama is mostly hanging out over here in this pool. We do have two other dolphins that are over here that are working with their trainers, Julie and Cami. Um, the dolphin that you see all the way to the right that's given us a little wave with her flipper right now is Hope. And Hope is our youngest dolphin. She's about two years old. She's doing actually really well in these pools. She's a rock star. She doesn't even mind. So Hope over there um, is very, very young. And actually, how many of you guys have seen Dolphin Tail? Awesome. So you guys probably came to see Winter, right? Well, Winter is right next to Hope over there, so they're together right now, and they have a lot of things in common. Winter and Hope were actually rescued at about the same age. They were both about two months old at the time of their rescue. Um, they were both rescued in the Indian River Lagoon system. That's about three hours away on the other coast of Florida, um, near Cape, Ca oh, excuse me, near Cape Canaveral. And um, they were both rescued in the month of December, so Hope actually was rescued exactly five years and one day after winter was rescued. So they have a lot of things in common. They do have one big difference between the two of them. As many of you know, winter is here due to a very serious injury to her tail. Um, Hope is actually here because she unfortunately lost her mother. So if you take a look at Hope, she doesn't look any different from any other dolphin. She's not um, missing any flippers or her tail or anything like that, but she is missing her mom. Um, she was swimming around with her mother and unfortunately her mother had passed away and dolphins do learn everything they need to know from mom. They learn where to find their fish, proper ways of catching their fish and hunting, and also how to look out for predators. Does anybody know a predator of a dolphin? What do you think? Shark? Absolutely correct. Sharks. Oh, a wild. So as humans, we can't really teach Hope how to be a wild dolphin. We're not dolphins. It would be fun if we were. But we can't teach Hope how to look out for sharks. We can't teach her how to hunt fish out there in the ocean. So that's why she's a resident animal. That's why she has to stay here at the aquarium because she doesn't have the life skills that are necessary to live out in the wild. And we have other facilities that come here. They consult with us. We all make a decision on whether or not we think the animal is releasable. If they are a good candidate for release, then we'll release them back out into the wild. But that's only if we think that they have a good chance of survival. If they don't have a good chance of survival, then we're going to keep them here so that we can provide a home for them and take care of them because we wouldn't want them to perish. So we also have last but certainly not least Winter. And Winter um, is kind of making some noises. You guys can probably hear her. Um, those are her Tweety Bird noises. Um, just like in the movie, she makes those noises all the time. That's her vocalizations. And Winter um, is here because she did lose her tail flukes. She was entangled in the ropes of a crab trap. So basically what happened was that rope had wrapped so tightly around her body and her tail that it cut off the blood circulation to the flukes. And the flukes on the dolphin are the two fins that are located at the very end of their tail. So they're those two triangular flippers that you see at the end of the dolphin's tail. And those 
Those are made completely out of cartilage and tissue. There's no bone in there to support it. So whenever the rope had wrapped tightly around the tail, it cut off her blood circulation and the tissue in that area began to die and slowly fall away from her body. So most of her tail actually came off all by itself. We did make a small amputation once it reached a certain point because Winter had not only lost her tail flukes, but she also lost a few of the vertebrae in her spine. So to prevent any infection and prevent it from spreading all the way up her tail, we did make a surgical amputation there to prevent that. And if you watch closely as she swims, you will notice that she swims very differently from other dolphins. She's adapted to move side to side. So the portion that she still has of her tail is called the peduncle. And it's kind of a silly word, but that's the term for the long portion that goes from the, the dorsal fin on the back all the way down to the two tail flukes. So that's the part that Winter still has. It um, does have a slight curvature um, because she doesn't use her up and down muscles or her dorsal and ventral muscles very often. And so that's why Hanger Clinic actually made Winter her very own prosthetic tail. So I brought that so you guys could see it today. And this is the actual model that we use with her on a daily basis. So this probably looks a lot different from the one that you saw in the old dolphin tail months because as she gets older and larger, we make more and more tails to better fit her body. And as technology progresses, we're able to make them more realistic and more comfortable for her. So um, the, this part right here at the very end, these are the flukes that I was talking about. And then this part at the end is the strap that fits on her. Thank you guys for joining us, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day at the aquarium. 